I'm Mitchell Brin. I'm a neurologist and senior vice president of R&D here at AbbVie at Mallard Anesthetics, and also the chief scientific officer for Botox and Neurotoxins. There's an element of serendipity in the discovery process with botulinum toxin. Louis Pasteur is quoted as saying that chance favors only the prepared mind. It's the concept that as you're going down a journey, you're, you're keeping your eyes open to new opportunities. So your mind is prepared to take in the new information, but very quickly turn it into a new discovery. All this began about 35 or so years ago when I was a first year resident with a fellowship in movement disorders. For many of the patients in my practice, the scientific understanding of their condition was still evolving and we had very few viable treatment options. So when I heard about the impact seen by others exploring applications for botulinum toxin, I was immediately inspired. Scientists had known about this substance for over a century. It thrives naturally in soil and contaminated food. Back in the 1970s, an ophthalmologist named Alan Scott was looking for a substance that could be injected locally and would cause temporary muscle weakness he found that botulinum toxin might be a reasonable place to start. Muscles are controlled by motor nerves, and these nerves release a chemical called acetylcholine that tells the muscles to contract. Botulinum toxin has the ability to block the release of acetylcholine, which is why it was initially explored to help eye muscles from involuntarily contracting. The very important step is to turn it into a medicine and so Dr. Scott had to work with several scientists to obtain the material, to purify it, and then to formulate it so he could ultimately pull it out of a vial with a syringe and inject it into patients. My mentor, Stanley Fawn, went to one of Alan Scott's presentations. He thought about bringing botulinum toxin back so we could explore its potential in treating our patients with movement disorders. And for me, that's where it all began. I was a fellow overseeing much of the clinical research, and I had these patients who were suffering with severe muscle spasms. And given the novel nature of the treatment, we started with tiny doses and systematically worked with patients to try to figure out what's the dose, what's the concentration, what's the right place to inject it. At the time that I was doing my initial research, there were no textbooks, there were no guidelines, so it was really an age of exploration, an age of discovery. The compound eventually became known as Botox. I look back at this journey in my mind as an amazing combination of serendipitous findings. For example, when I treated a patient, she reported that the treatment had a positive impact on her medical condition, but also the wrinkles on that side of the face improved. This patient and others like her opened up a whole exploration into the aesthetic application for this treatment, which ultimately led to the development of Botox Cosmetic. Another area of serendipity was when one of my colleagues using Botox for aesthetic use told me that his patients reported a reduction in migraine headaches. This was unanticipated and was very interesting. So I began researching if Botox may be a therapeutic option for this condition. As a clinician, you're always looking for ways that you can improve a patient's condition. I mean, that's what we do in the practice of medicine. And so in this discovery environment, we had an open mind to how can we use a therapeutic in treating patients with different medical conditions. And when you think about the 15 indications that Botox has achieved, what's absolutely remarkable is the breadth of medical and aesthetic uses. There are very few medications that span so many specialties. The coming together of Allergan and Advi has resulted in more resources, more intellectual capital, more brilliant scientists from both companies to create new botulinum toxins that will restate how we look at and how we treat medical and aesthetic conditions. The most inspiring thing is the ability to help a patient. But patients have inspired me. They give you little insights in terms of how you can use the medicine more effectively. And it's those insights that your mind has to be prepared for. Effects of Botox and Botox Cosmetic may spread hours to weeks after injection, causing serious symptoms. 
Alert your doctor right away as difficulty swallowing, speaking, breathing, eye problems, or muscle weakness can be signs of a life-threatening condition. Patients with these conditions before injection are at highest risk. Side effects may include allergic reactions, neck and injection site pain, fatigue, and headache. Allergic reactions can include rash, welts, asthma symptoms, and dizziness. Don't receive Botox or Botox Cosmetic if there's a skin infection. Tell your doctor your medical history, muscle or nerve conditions, including ALS Lou Gehrig's disease, myasthenia gravis, or Lambert-Eden syndrome, and medications including botulinum toxins, as these may increase the risk of serious side effects.